Let's talk about the Anaheim Ducks offense this season. Hi, I'm Gio. I'm a professional sportscaster and welcome to my channel where we talk about all things Pacific Division hockey. This season, the Anaheim Ducks came in seventh in the Pacific Division and seemed quite far off of making it to the Stanley Cup playoffs. The last time they qualified for the playoffs was in the 2017-2018 season and even then they got brutally first rounded by the San Jose Sharks where they lost 0-4. Since then, the Ducks have really struggled to put their name on the map against some of the big heavy hitters in the Pacific Division and today I wanted to have a look at some of the aspects of their offense and see if there's any hope for the upcoming season. First, I think it's important to lay down some groundwork and contextualize the Ducks' performance this season with some stats. There are a few notable players who I think are worth bringing up here, the first of which is Troy Terry, who was the Ducks' highest points and highest goal scorer at 37 goals and 67 points. Terry also came in at number one player on the team for even strength goals at 29 and is the only player on the team to have scored a hat trick this season. The next player I want to talk about is Trevor Zegras, who came in second for goals, second for points, but first for assists this season with a record of 23-38-61. He came second in even strength goals with 14, but first in power play goals with nine and actually had the highest portion of his shootout attempts result in goals with six of his nine attempts succeeding. And he was NHL Rookie of the Month in December for scoring 11 points in nine games. And then lastly, Adam Henrique, who came in third for points and goals. He had a record of 19-23-42. He also came in third for even strength and power play goals, where he got 13 and six respectively. Now, while these stats represent the best of the Ducks offensive prowess, when we actually compare them to the two top teams in the division, Calgary and Edmonton, we start to see where some of those disparities lie. Starting with Edmonton, the team had two players who topped 100 points in the regular season in McDavid and Dreisaitl, both of whom also bested Terry's goal scoring at 44 and 55 respectively. Three players had more assists than the Ducks best at 79, 55 and 39, and those were achieved by McDavid, Dreisaitl and Nugent Hopkins respectively. They had a consistent and successful first power play unit comprising McDavid, Dreisaitl, Nugent Hopkins, Hyman and Barry, which actually made up 51% of their power play units that they played in the last 10 games of the season. Dwarfing Terry's one hat trick, the Oilers actually had seven, although two of these were in the playoffs and done by Evander Kane. Evander Kane, who by the way, only played 43 games and still went 22-17-39 overall. 23 players on Edmonton had a Corsi 4 percentage of over 50%, the Ducks had just 10 players. Moving over to Calgary, they also had two players who had 100 plus points in Goudreau and Kachuk. Three players scored more goals than Terry and four players scored more assists than Zgras. Kachuk and Lindholm both had more power play goals than Zgras and they both consistently played on the top power play unit alongside top points accruer Goudreau. They had four hat tricks with just one being in the playoffs and they had 24 players who had a Corsi 4 percentage of over 50%. Also, an entire seven players who play more than one game in the regular season had a goals for over 60 average higher than the top goals for over 60 on the Ducks of 3.6. Now these may seem like harsh comparisons but these sort of statistics represents what you really need to be achieving in order to make it as far as these two teams have getting into playoffs and succeeding when you're there. The fact that no one on the Ducks has over 40 goals scored in the regular season is something that needs to be addressed. I also think it's incredibly important to consider the fact that until Getzlaff retired at the end of the season, the first line was basically consistent throughout the entire season from midway through uh, the really big win streak that the Ducks had in November. It's not often that you would see Terry Henry and Getzlaff be separated, which is not inherently a bad thing, but it just means that they don't really have the flexibility that teams like Calgary and Edmonton have to mix and match their top lines a little bit more. Now, these three players that I brought up all represent something a little bit different for the Ducks as a team. Henrique has been with the Ducks since November 2017 when he was traded from the NJ Devils. He's currently their third most expensive player. He is their most expensive forward and he has a salary of $5.825 million, which is 7.1% of the Ducks' annual salary cap. He's also a bit older than a number of the other forwards at 32 and he's set to become an unrestricted free agent in 2024. Troy Terry was drafted by the Ducks in 2015, fifth round, 148th overall, and he has at least one more season with the team as he's set to be 
become a restricted free agent in 2023. He also takes just 1.8% of the Ducks annual salary cap at a salary of $1.45 million. Then we go all the way down to Trevor Zegras, who is just 21 years old, and he's still on his three-year entry-level contract after being drafted in 2019, first round, ninth overall. Zegras was originally put on the San Diego Gulls roster, but was recalled to the Ducks roster for some time in November 2021. He did end up going back to the Gulls for some development time, but because he was developing a lot faster than they necessarily anticipated, he was actually allowed to be playing in the center position way earlier than most young players get to. Now, I think this is pretty important to consider because it just goes to show that the Ducks aren't necessarily in the same place as a team that teams like Calgary and Edmonton are. This year, they've had their biggest franchise player retire and their two highest achievers be young players who are coming up through the throngs of development. To me, this marks a potential turning point and a new era in the Ducks story, especially with new GM Pat Verbeek taking things over and starting essentially a new era of management. And combine this as well with other entry-level players like Mason McTavish, who was drafted in 2021 first round third overall he scored his first goal and assist for the team in the first game of the season there's a lot of promise there he was put back onto the san diego goals once he played his nine games with the nhl team but then he sustained an injury and has been playing in the ohl for a little while he's on the hamilton bulldogs right now and this all means he won't be becoming a restricted free agent until 2025 at least it's likely they'll want to see mctavish grow into a strong center very similarly to seagrass but maybe not on quite such an expedited time timeline but either way this is two young first round picks that could help pave the way for the future of the ducks anaheim clearly don't have a star player in the same way that for example edmonton do but developing players like terry and zgrass into those roles could be a process that they commit to especially if it means that they can spread their strengths a little more and not rely on just one line combination so those are some of my thoughts on the anaheim ducks offensive performance and maybe some of their options that they have right now i would love to know what you guys think do you think that there's much hope for this team going forward? Do you think they should be relying on these rookies and developing young players? Or do you think they just need to do something completely different? Do you see the retirement of Getzlaff as an opportunity for the next era? Or do you think that it's a bad thing to have happened to the team? Let me know all your thoughts below. What I know is I love an underdog story and I think that there is definitely talent and promise on this roster. And uh, I'm excited to see how that goes. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.